this corner here. And this man, God, is just in charge. So many people. And that you pressed your way through the snow, the blizzard outside. Yes, um, this morning, we were in our 8 o'clock service, and those pressed out, and we talked about disciples of the Lord. And then the cheeks, they gave me a, a book, because uh, they love their pastor. They know he can read. So I was actually um, back in the office. I read the whole book um, between services, between Sunday school and this service. And there was a, a quote that stuck out, I think, that can lead us into worship today. The book is called The Donkey Who Cared a King, and it's by R.C. Sproul. And um, on page 22, let me get there. I want to read you um, uh, just a piece of this. It said, by the time Davy got home, he was very grumpy. Why did the master make me carry those olives? He grumbled to old Barnabas. I carried the king. I shouldn't have to carry ordinary things. That's the donkey. Barnabas frowned. We are donkeys, he said. It is our job to carry things, whatever the master decides to put on our backs. Every job is important, even carrying sacks of olives. And you should do your best to do it well. Some of y'all need to hear it again, because we got some donkeys in the house and should be happy. <laughs> Barnabas frowned. We are donkeys. It is our job to carry things, whatever the master decides to put on our backs. Every job is important, even carrying sacks of olives, and you should do your best to do it well. I proclaim today, I am so happy to be a donkey. You might not want to be a donkey, but I am. In that thought, I want us to be able to worship God in this period of silence. And, and those who are saved, who are disciples of the Lord, who are donkeys of the Lord, man, I want you to go into worship and praise time just thanking God for using you. Because he didn't have to do it. He didn't have to use you. He didn't have to choose you. But I'm so, 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 so glad he did. Let's worship. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you. 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 Thank
Thank you for giving us a story. Thank you for putting a call on our lives. Thank you for making us disciples of you. Oh God, we want to be used more. From the young to the old, Lord, use us for your plan and purpose. We just give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can you give God a hand clap of praise as you take your seat? Amen. God is so wonderful and worthy of all the praise. At this time, we're going to ask this family to touch and she come forth with our responsive reading for this morning. And after our responsive reading, I'm going to ask Brother Free uh, to come with our announcements. Good morning, church. Good morning. Our responsive reading today comes from Psalms 127.1, 1 Kings 8, verses 8 through 21, and Isaiah 56, verse 7. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. Nothing was in the ark except the two tablets of stone which Moses put there at four when the Lord made the covenant with the children of Israel when they came out of the land of Egypt. So that the priests could not continue ministering because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. Built you an exalted house and a palace, I'm sorry, and a place for you to dwell in forever. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who spoke with his mouth to my father David, and with his hand has fulfilled its saying. This is the day that I brought my people to build the temple for the name of the Lord God of Israel. Nevertheless, you shall not build the temple, but your son who will come from your body, he shall build the temple for my name. gave you a palm to pin on your clothes. Palm Sunday celebrates Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem and marks the start of Holy Week, the final days of his earthly ministry. There will be a Palm Sunday community service this afternoon at Shiloh Baptist Church, located at 1210 South Eugene Street, Greensboro, 27406. Service will start at 4 p.m., the speaker will be Minister Darren Mitchell. Everyone is invited to support this community service. On Monday, we'll have topical Bible study in the Fellowship Hall from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. All are invited. Tuesday, we'll have our noonday Bible study in the Fellowship Hall from 12 noon to 1245. 
We're continuing to study the model church. All are invited. On Tuesday evening, the leadership meeting has been canceled due to the Holy Week community service at St. John Baptist Church, located at 4201 Alston Drive, off of North Carolina Highway 62. That's in Climax, and the zip is 27233. The guest speaker will be Minister Daryl Aaron. Everyone is invited to attend. Service will start at 7 p.m. Wednesday, we'll have prayer at 7 p.m. and Bible study at 7.30 p.m. in the sanctuary. We are studying the book of Exodus. All are welcome. Thursday, we'll have Holy Week community services to continue at St. James Baptist Church, located at 536 West Florida Street. That's also in Greensboro. Zip is 27406. Pastor Herman Platt will be speaking. Everyone is invited to attend. The service will start at 7 p.m. to celebrate Monday, Thursday. Friday, the Holy Week community service will be at Providence Baptist Church, 1106 Tuscaloosa Street, that's in Greensboro, and the zip is 27406. Service will start at 7 p.m. to celebrate Good Friday. The speaker will be Pastor W.F. Wright. Everyone is invited to attend this community service. Saturday, we'll have a courageous ministry practice from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., Male choir rehearsal in the sanctuary at 10 a.m. And youth choir rehearsal in the sanctuary at 11 a.m. Next Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. We'll have our 8 a.m. morning worship service with communion. Sunday school at 9.45 for all ages and 11 a.m. morning worship service. The youth choir will render the music for both services. Additional announcements? Please, please, please mark your calendars for youth revival. 2018. It will be the first week of April, starting at 7 p.m. nightly in the sanctuary on Monday, April 2nd, Tuesday, April 3rd, and Wednesday, April 4th. The guest speaker will be Pastor Alton Van Jr. from Jones Cross Road Baptist Church. He is a captivating preacher who delivers a, wor delivers a word to the youth and adults in a modern, interactive way. It is Come As You Are and bring all the young people in your life with you. Additionally, there will be a youth lounge open in the fellowship hall from 6 p.m. to 6.40 p.m. each night for all youth up to the age of 25 with food, fellowship, and music prior to revival service each night. The sanctuary will be open for prayer for all others over the age of 25 while the youth lounge is open. At this time, we'd like to recognize all visitors. If you're visiting with us this morning, please stand and give us your name and any remarks you may have. Visitors, please stand. Amen. Everybody's home. Amen. Now, as a family of Christ, we'd like to recognize our birthdays and anniversaries. If your birthday anniversary is today through this Saturday, please stand and be recognized.
anniversary. Happy birthday to each and every one of you. I pray that each of you have a great day and a blessed week. As our officers are coming forth, we thank Brother Free for uh, just falling forth with uh, excellent doing our announcements. Uh, just thank God for all those that are involved in the service of the Lord. Our giving time, uh, very important, we talked about it, our 8 o'clock service. Uh, this scripture is what we hold to here at Ebenezer. God has done so much. 2 Corinthians 9 and 7. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And I want you to be a cheerful in your giving. You are an excellent giver. Thank you so much. Um, I was talking to our officers some days ago, and they were commending on how Ebenezer gives. You've already given from your hearts, and we thank you, thank you so much. On last night, the Hamptons were uh, teaching us in our couples ministry, and they brought out a point, and I think this is applicable to our giving. They were holding each other's hands, and they said sometimes in marriage, um, you get a division. The wife pulls one way, and the husband pulls another way. But you're still holding hands. And they said, what changes our marriage is that Christ is in the middle. So where we're holding hands, Christ is in the middle. So if we have a relationship with him, we can always reach and grab Christ, which brings us back together. We can hug Christ even when we don't want to hug each other. And sometimes that can happen even within our giving. If God ever spoke to you and said, I want you to give this, and you go, nah, I don't want to give that. That's your flesh. Your flesh fights against you. You're, you're struggling. You know, you, you might want that cute pair of shoes instead of giving on Sunday. But then you have to grab hold of Christ, and he brings it all together. And then I realize, and my family realize, how good God has been to us. How, how he's blessed us so much. The other day, I haven't talked about this in some while, so I'll bring it back up. I remember years ago that I could only afford a quarter of gas. Some of you are like, Pastor, I'm there right now. Bless your heart. But I remember. I remember a quarter of gas. That's all I had. I remember one that was like a dollar, 75 cents. That's how old some of you are. But all I had was a quarter to put gas in. And I would put a quarter or so in the tank, and I would just believe God. I just hope for the next quarter to come my way. But now I got a little tiny car, and I can go up to the gas station, and I can feel that thing all the way up. It takes about 35 cents, don't play. I, it's just, and I don't even have to think about it. I don't even have to think about that. And you know, so often God blesses us. He gives us more, and we take it for granted. And we don't praise him the way we should. Yeah. So if you see me at the gas station with my little car and, and I just get a shout, don't think anything's wrong. I'm just praising God for what he's done in my life. And I encourage you to do the same via your giving. Officers. Bow our heads for prayer, please. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for a day that we've never seen before. Lord, we thank you for all your blessings, even the snow that came last night. Uh, and so late in March, Lord, we ask that you would bless our pastor and our people in Ebenezer today and his whole family. Lord, we ask that you would bless them, those that gave this morning and those that had a desire to do it but couldn't. We ask that you would bless the offering that we're about to receive now that it may be uh, received for the building of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 May we stand together and follow the ushers.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. This morning when I rose, I didn't have no doubt. Put your hands together.
have seen God is faithful in the good times as well as the bad times. We not be, may not be 80 yet, but those that have learned to talk to the Lord and He talked back to us, we know that God has been truly good. During this time, we just want to pray for those who are going through. There's so many. Donna Kamathi, would you lift her up in prayer? I was over at the hospital and just going from room to room and just seeing people going through struggling, uh, people with flu and other diseases. Let's, let's pray for them. Let's pray for um, Mother Eva Israel, who just got an amputation. Pray for the family, the caregivers that are going through and having to deal with family. Let's lift up Mother Gaddy. Just lift up uh, all the families that are connected. One of the family members spoke to me the other day, said one of their family members flew, was in the nursing facility. Let's pray for our family members that are uh, Sister Effie Mevin in the nursing facilities that are going through. God has protected her in the midst of all of that flu. They're keeping people out of the nursing facility, and God is still faithful to them. You have loved ones that are going through. Let's intercede for our colleges our college students and our elementary and grade schools. Our kids are being challenged with so much more, I think, than, than we were challenged at, at this time and this age because we're opened up in our internet. Let's pray for that. And I'm excited today. We've got a person who's not 80 years old, but he can say in his life, he feels like he's gone through so much to be 80 years old. Um, you've prayed for him, and please don't stop praying for him. Our young people that go through so many times, we wonder why they make that dumb decision. All you got to do is think back to your life. See, you done got so old, people done forgot your dumb mistakes. But nevertheless, they were still dumb. So I'm excited today, in spite of all the struggles he's going through, that he is here today. He's going to lead us in the prayer. One of the Serranos, Richard, would you come forth and lead us in our moments tonight? Let us pray. Dear gracious Father, we come to you as humble as we know how. Just to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for still being who you are. Thank you for interceding on our behalf. Thank you for leading us and guiding us, Lord. Lord, continue to, to be in our hearts and our minds. Lord, please bless those that are going through struggles and trials in their life right now. Continue to give them the wisdom and understanding that, that through it all that you have their goodness in their, in their in your sight. Lord, continue to bless, continue to touch the nursing homes, continue to touch those that are sick and afflicted, continue to, continue to be on their, their minds. Lord, bless everyone that's here under the sound of our voice that had a mind to come out and worship here today, Lord. Lord, we say thank you. We say thank you for, for this fellowship. We say thank you for the leadership. We say thank you, Lord, for everything that you're doing in our lives. Continue, continue to give up the praises out of our mouth. Lord, no matter where we go, let us know that not only here can we be the church, but we can take the church wherever we go. Lord, allow us to continue to minister to the hearts and minds of those that need it desperately. Allow us to be that light in the darkness. Lord, continue, con continue to, to be in my heart, Lord. Continue to lead and guide me in everything that I do. Be first in my life and be first in everybody's life in here, Lord. Lord, we magnify your holy and righteous name right now. We give you all the honor and praise. Continue to bless the schools and the children that go to it. You know, Lord, please, please, we, we lift up our government. We lift up, we lift up, we lift up our educational systems. We lift up all the things that, that we see on the TV that might be dim. But we know that through it all that you, you will reign supreme. That your promises will never go void. That your love for us will, will surely reign through. And that someday your glory will be, will be magnified across the whole earth. Lord, we say thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who lived, who died, who rose again on the third day. On this Palm Sunday, let we go through this week and let, let we continue to, to, to remember what he did for us on, on Calvary. Lord, we, we say thank you right now for the pastor and the shepherd in this house and the, and the Holy Anointed Spirit that's going to come down and, 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 and give us a blessing today because we need a word. Lord, continue to renew and refresh our spirits and our minds as we go forth throughout the rest of this week. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.
I'm going to heaven, going to sing and shout. Nobody there will put me out. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. Oh, I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. Upstairs. Anybody getting ready? I saw y'all out there. Y'all wanted to stand up. Y'all said, I want to get ready too quick. That's what it was. Thank you, singers. You ready for God's word today? Let's grab those Bibles, please. And let's go back to the book of Romans, chapter 12. Romans, chapter 12. I want you to go to that. 14 verse. So last Sunday we started the, stopped at the 13th verse. I wanted to go a little further, but it seemed good to the Lord to press on to this 14 verse today. Romans chapter 12 and 14. While you're looking for that in your heads bow, we ask you please go to word of prayer with me. Father, thank you so much for making us ready. True Lord, we don't know the day nor the hour that you'll call us home. We don't know the day nor hour that you're going to come back and crack the sky. Either way, we just want to be ready. Father, I pray for those that are here today that may not know you, that, that are not ready. Lord, would you help them to confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart that, Father, you have raised them from the dead. And you said they would be saved. Let them know it's by grace through faith and not of themselves. It's a gift of God. Help them to receive that beautiful gift that you've given us. Lord, I ask you to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Thank you for just another day. Lord, because you've chosen me to be a donkey. I celebrate that. But I know it's bigger than me, Lord. It's really about your Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, you've never failed. Would you teach us? Would you guide us? Would you lead us into all truth? Would you make this word so plain, so easy to be understood that even a small child can be transformed and be like you? Please be in my eyes and my seeing, my mouth and my speaking, my heart and my understanding. Lord, we thank you for this Palm Sunday that we traditionally celebrate you coming into Jerusalem, Lord, on that donkey. Palm branches laid down. People shouting, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Thank you for being our Lord and Savior. Speak to us internally, Lord, into our spirit that we may be more like you. In Jesus' name, amen. Romans 12, 14, powerful, small verse. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. I kind of slipped it in on you on last Sunday. I'm going to speak from the subject, no more cursing in the house. No more cursing in the house. Some of you might miss that, so um, I want you to please look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Good, morning. good morning, I need to tell you something, no more, no more. Cursing. cursing in the house. Yeah. No more cursing in the house. Before we go any further, I need to define the parameters of cursing. Some of you are just thinking about some of your favorite words that slip up every now and then. Uh, there have been times in my office that people have come in and they didn't mean it. Uh, I'd find out what's in their heart. They'd be talking to me and we just kind of be happy with one another. And all of a sudden, want to slip out. <laughs> now, I know those who are progressing when one slips out because they always say, oh, I'm sorry, Pastor. But those who don't say nothing, I know it's just a common thing that they always do. <laughs> We're not just dealing with language issues, but the definition of cursing is anything that's not blessing. So anything we say or do that does not bless is actually a curse. As we go into our time frame again, it's AD 57. Uh, Paul writes this wonderful book under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we believe that it's about the end of his third missionary 
uh, journey. Uh, Romans explores uh, the significance of being a Christian. Uh, what Christ's sacrificial death actually did for us. It's more than just coming to church, but Him, uh, Jesus dying on the cross transforms us from the inside out. It literally makes us a new creation, the scriptures talked about. As we were going through the scriptures on last Sunday, we were applying the righteousness of God to our lives. This is the most exciting thing for me. Um, I believe that when you get saved, there's a transformative process that happens on the inside, and you change whether you like it or not. Truly, you change whether you like it or not. Some of our issues with this season now, even though we're in spring, we're concerned because it's not changing enough for us. But just wait a little while. It will change. If you've been saved, you will change more and more for him, that application. On last Sunday, we were in Romans 12 and 11. It said, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. And I asked that question to you. Are you serving the Lord? How do you plug into the body of Christ? In our 8 o'clock service, we talked about disciples of the Lord. Are you truly a disciplined follower of God? We're learning how Christians should behave. Did you know there's a standard, if you're a Christian, on how you behave? Not just when you come to church. This is not a, a how a lengthy is your dress or if you have a suit on or whether you have a tie on or a bow tie. It's bigger than that. There are behavioral standards for the child of God. Quickly, let's jump into Romans 12, 14. Paul starts out with this, and I, I know some of you, you wish that he would have left this out because this will change your life when you get grabbed. It's changed my life. 12, 14 again. Bless those. Who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. No more cursing in the house. Now I know some of you may be goody two shoes, but there are a few of you in the house that can understand sometimes folks can get on your last. Oh, uh, you sitting there, it's fine. I'll take my time. We'll get through it together. They will get on your last nerve. And, and I'm telling you, in the house of the Lord, sometimes we can hold it together because we've got like-minded people for the most part. But in this world, there'll be somebody that will get next to you. And sadly to say, it could be your husband, your wife, your child, but will press you to the point. And sometimes we can feel as Christians that people are coming against us, that we are being persecuted, that people are trying to steal our praise and joy, but even in that, we're not supposed to retaliate. You mean to tell me, God, via the scripture, you're saying that when somebody curses at me, I don't give them a good curse back. You mean to tell me when somebody causes problems in my life, I don't retaliate and cause problems in their lives. Some of you know you say because you used to be like this. <laughs> Nobody messed with you because they understood something. You mess with me, I'm going to mess with you. And no matter how bad you mess with me, my bad going to be better than your bad. That's not the Christian way. Theologian McDonald, he writes this. He says, it requires divine life to repay unkindness and injury with a curse. The natural response is to curse and retaliate. That's our natural response. I was I looking at a movie with my mom on last night. It was the tough story. And it was about this guy who came into the school, the Manier uh, building, and was getting ready to shoot up all the kids and was emotionally disturbed. And this lady wasn't even supposed to be there, the bookkeeper. She was able to identify with this man that was getting ready to shoot her, and she talked into his life. How do you love somebody that got a gun pointed in your face? that literally wants to kill you, doesn't care anything about you, but you understand something. Lord, even though I'm being persecuted now, blessings are more powerful than cursing back. But to be sad today, when we think about it, many of us feel like this old Irish prayer. Listen to this. May those that love us, love us. And those that don't love us, may God turn their hearts. And if he doesn't turn their hearts, May he turn their ankles so we'll know them by their limping. 
No more cursing in the house. Yeah, we, we, we have a problem because when we when we bless somebody, we expect many, uh, much change. We expect all of a sudden for it to happen quickly. But sometimes it takes long time. Excruciating pain when, when somebody continues to persecute you, but yet you still bless them. Some have come to me just recently and said, Pastor, I feel like a doormat. People are persecuting me, talking about me, and yet you're saying, bless them in spite of? I used to be able to take care of myself. But now what am I supposed to do? Let God take care of me. Paul the Apostle spoke of this treatment by his enemies in 1 Corinthians 4 and 11 to present to this present hour we both hunger and thirst and we are poorly clothed and beaten and homeless. And we labor working with our hands, being reviled, we bless, being persecuted, we endure. 1 Corinthians 4.13, being defamed, we entreat, we have been made as the filth of the world, world the offscoring of all things until now. No more cursing in the house. To be honest with you, sometimes in our blessing, we're still walked on. Yeah, we can feel like people are using us until we're used up. But I want you to know that God has your back. If we can just hold on, have patience and endure, God is up to something. There ought to be some amens in the house. Some of you know God can turn your enemy around and your enemy can become your best friend that has your back. God can use the most unlovely person and make them the person that you always wanted. Romans 12, 15, no more cursing in the house. Paul says, rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. We see this with the scripture with Jesus Christ. Uh, he actually rejoiced at the marriage feast. He was with those. That was where his first miracle was performed there. He also wept at the graveside of Lazarus. Where we get one of the shortest verses, Jesus wept. He understood how to rejoice and weep. Saints of God, are we really taking our call to the utmost that we can come alongside people and we can be there in their happiness? Not putting them down. Some of us can be jealous when other folks are having happiness. We're too busy thinking about God. Why don't you bless me like you bless them? When we really should be coming alongside and rejoicing with them, thanking God that he's blessing them because hasn't God blessed us more than enough? Some of us shy away from those who are weeping and struggling, but shouldn't we be the Christians to stop by their home to call them and say, you know what, I was in a weeping state before, and God came in the nick of time, and he brought me out, and I'm going to hold your hands, and I'll cry with you through this, because I know my God is faithful. Farstead, the theologian, he writes this. He says, empathy is the capacity for sharing vicariously the feelings and emotions of others. Our tendency is to be jealous when others rejoice and to pass by when they mourn. God's way is to enter into the joys and sorrows of those around us. No more cursing. It's amazing. As you're a young person, I remember this day when you would see people sick. I, I would always say, well, won't you just believe God? Won't you just trust him for your divine healing? I, I, was, I was really big in that. God will heal you, and I know he will, but when you get old and start having pain, you start reinterpreting the scriptures a little bit. You start saying, God, I know you'll never leave me, don't forsake me. God, help me through this pain. Help me to deal with this struggle that's in my life. You start to look at things a little different. When I was young, I didn't have empathy to go along and understand what folks are going through. But as you get a little older, they got to be some amens in the house. And that's why I found out don't speak too quickly. Don't curse too quickly because you could be in that same situation looking for somebody to bless you. We need to be intimately involved in the lives of other believers. You need to get to know them. And I, I know that's not an acceptable thing within our society because people are so private. Even though we got thousands of social friends on Facebook, we're so private and don't want people to know what we're going through. But saints of God, we need to know those that are around us. We need to ride by their houses sometimes. Like, please don't. <laughs> Why? Because 
when we ride by their houses at times, uh, it keeps us on edge to let us know that we got brothers and sisters that care about us, that love us, that got our back, and that, that want us to grow in the Lord. But when we get along by ourselves, there's no encouragement. We tend to go the other way. But thank God for those who bless and don't curse. We've got to identify with the sorrows, the anxieties that people are going through. And even if we haven't gone through to give way to know, you know what, I may be in that same situation and I'll need somebody to hold my hand. Romans 12, 16, look at this. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. No more cursing in the house. Now, now this is key. The, the, the church of God, we need to be led the Holy Spirit. In everything that we do. And in this, it said that we need to have the same mind. That doesn't mean that we agree on everything all the time. That doesn't mean that we're like robots. But it means that we hold forth the principles of Christ. It doesn't matter where you come from, your background, Presbyterian, Methodist, Pentecostal. The, the first and most is, do we believe in Jesus? Do we believe that he died for us on the cross of Calvary, that he rose on the third day, and if we accept him as our Savior, that's first off. It doesn't matter how you praise, your motive of praise is what if the praise is on the inside of you. I got the same mind. So that means even when I disagree, I'm still trying to work to that same collusion, conclusion of peace in Jesus Christ. And, and in that, he adds to that, he said, don't set your mind on high things. But you got to associate with the humble. The, the problem in God blessing us, we literally tend to curse more than we bless. It would seem as God blesses us more, we would bless others more. But literally, the, the, the opposite change. The enemy comes in in the blessings, we become snobbish. Some of you are. You, you've been blessed. You've you got nice clothes on. And, and now that you can afford perfume and cologne and deodorant... Those who may not be there, you kind of shy away from them. Yeah. You don't want your, your fine stuff to get dirty. I, I remember this, and I'm just picking on ladies today. Before we paved our parking lot, one of the complainants uh, was, was that, you know what, I got these heels on. <laughs> Pastor, I got these heels, and, and I just can't walk across rocks because it's messing up my heels. But when you couldn't afford those nice heels, it was no big deal. You would put your slacks on and walk across whatever you could walk across, and it was okay. But when God blesses us, Acts 4.32, uh, you see, Pastor, what is the mindset? It says, now the multitude of those who believe were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things. God. No more cursing. When you learn not to curse in flesh, you start to realize the stuff I have is really not mine anyway. You start to come to the point of I'm not going to bellyache over anything, but I want to be a blessing because when we look at our lives, we've got more than enough. Amen. Check your closets. Look at your garage. Spring cleaning is on the way. Some of you, you shouldn't even call it a garage anymore. It's just an add-on room in your house. You're so ashamed of it, you don't even let the big door up anymore. <laughs> Neighbors are wondering, why don't they put their car in the garage like everybody else? It will not fit anymore. <laughs> Could it be that we're actually cursing and not blessing? God has given us so much that we're hoarding it on ourselves. We're stuck up and we're not willing to reach out and give. We're thinking that we're all of that and a bag of chips. <laughs> that nobody can touch us and it's even affecting our praise. Instead of blessing God, we're cursing because we're too clean to sweat anymore. <laughs> oh, forget that shouting because our hair may fall off. We don't want our makeup to run. We don't want to cry anymore. We don't want any of that. I mean, we got it all together. But if God has done something for you, every now and then, you need to let it go. No more cursing in the house. 
This cursing is not just to our neighbors, but could we even be cursing God by not giving him the praise? Yes. Romans 12, 17, he continues on. He says, repay no one evil. You the same book with me? Yes. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. No more cursing in the house. Uh, Paul goes on by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He said that we, we don't do it like we used to. Once we're saying, if someone gives us evil, we don't give evil back. I know you're messing you up, and I, I know somebody gonna come to me and say, Pastor, I, 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 you know what, that was a great sermon and everything, but I ain't there yet. If, if someone brings evil with me, I'm gonna bring it back. But I'm telling you, if you grow in the Lord, you are changed from the inside. Are there any changed folks? Because see, some of y'all are sitting there, but I know y'all reform hoodlums. Yes, y'all are. Yes, y'all are. Y'all look good right now, but you know God has done something in your life because you left your gun in the car. <laughs> you know, you know, you know God has brought you from a long, long way. <laughs> Repay no one evil for evil. So you say, Pastor, how do I do that? Because if, if somebody's come against me, my propensity is to go back to that old life and do that. How do I keep my mind safe? Because some of us, we can accept little stuff. So somebody kind of rushes up against us, brushes up against us, we go, oh, okay, it's okay. Somebody kind of crosses over, steps on our nice shoes, we're like, oh, okay, you, you didn't mean that. But what happens when they really mean it? When they shout and they smack you and you know they do what they would do. Y'all better walk with me. When you walk with me, we're going to get through this together. No more cursing in the house. It's in high regard for good things. Why has an husband? We've got to think on the good things because if we were honest, more cursing happens in the house than out of that. Yeah, that's why. That's why praise has been trifled within the church because we can't even get along in the house. Philippians 4 and 8 gives us a, a mindset of this. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, Whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good, report. If there is any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. But have you ever had a day you got up and you just felt like cursing? I may be talking to three folks in the house, but they are honest in the house. There's some days you get up and you just don't feel like meditating. But it's in those times our faith becomes even more powerful and we trust the Lord and he turns things around Romans 12 18 if it is possible hallelujah he gave me a way out if that if cause I got it I got it if it is possible as much as depends on you live peaceably with all men. Now, no more cursing house. Now, I know some of you, you've been trying to get it out of these scriptures. And Pastor, come on, let's get you that. Because it ain't possible. I know you already decided. It's not possible. I've done all that I can do, and I still don't have peace, so I'm going to give up. But the problem is, you haven't done all that Jesus said. I'll just give you one example. Uh, Jesus gave us steps to ensure that we maintain peace. Say, where's that at? Matthew 18 and 15. He tells us that there's going to be some times that we have issues with our brothers and sisters. He knows that. He knows that teeth fall out with tongues. He knows sometimes folks can get next to you in the wrong way. So Jesus says, moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. No more cursing now. So you can choose to bless curse, but if, if you do it Christ's way, he said, first you go to your brother and say, brother, we have some issues. And now notice he said, do this alone. You go alone to him because when you do it in a public manner, sometimes they can get crazy. You know, pride rises up. But you do it alone and you try to work it out. But there are some times, Matthew 18, 16, but if he will not hear, take with you one or two more 
that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. See, I'm trying, I'm trying not to curse. I'm trying not to curse. I'm, I, I want to bless. I want to bless. So he wouldn't hear me. She wouldn't hear me. I, well, I tried to talk to her, but I did all I could do. And I said, did you take another person? Yeah. Well, I don't want everybody in my business. Well, guess what? They're already in your business. We already know y'all don't like each other because you sit on that side of church and you sit on that side of church. We don't heard the cursing out in the parking lot. you got to get it together. So, so now I need, I need an intermediary. I need somebody to go with me. I don't need somebody just on my side. I need somebody to go, so I'm going to bring a witness. We're going to go to our brother and our sister because I don't want to curse them. I want to bless them. We're going to try to work this thing out. I found out in about 95% of the times, one and two take care of it all. But sometimes you do get into, if it is possible, Matthew 18, 17, and if he or she refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. Am I in the book with you? No more cursing in the house. Romans 12, 19. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance. Y'all with me now. I will repay, says the Lord. No more cursing in the house. He, he reaches out because this, this was a sensitive, sensitive issue. And he says, beloved, those who are loved by God, that's what that means. Those who are come in contact with God, pulled in by God's love, beloved. He said, don't avenge yourself. Some of you were brought up to fight. Your daddy told you if anybody push you, y'all see y'all, push them back. Don't be a pushover. You were brought up that way. But when you're saved, I got any man in the house. If I just, I must be on Mars this morning. It's okay. It says, but rather, I don't avenge myself. Somebody said, I, I didn't sign up for all of this. I didn't sign up to follow the Lord like this. But if you were saved, you start to realize I no longer have to fight my battle. But I, I give place to wrath. What it's saying is, I know who's in charge of wrath. Yeah, in this society, I am so excited. I'm realizing more and more as things are going crazy, who is in charge? Linsky, another the ocean, he writes this. It's, it's profound. He says, God has long ago settled the whole matter about exacting justice from wrongdoers. Not one of them will escape. Perfect justice will be done in every case and will be done perfectly. If any of us interfered, it would be the height of presumption. No more cursing how We need to know God is going to work it out. And in this society, we're in a tattletale society now. You know this in our government? Uh, one person tells on one person, and then all of a sudden the other person tells on the other person, and then the other person pulls something out of their pocket, and they tell on the other person. But the problem is that's not perfect justice. Because all of us have seen and fallen short of the kingdom of God, and I'm telling you, I'm leaving justice in God's hand because I need grace in my life. Anybody need grace in my life? Because I'm telling you, if we got what we deserve, are there a few folks that can holler, thank you, God, for grace and mercy? If we got what we deserve, I didn't, I didn't even come to this point to really talk about this. God just dropped in. Just think about if all of a sudden we were under review for all the bad stuff we've done in our life. God gave some of us a, a free flow to examine every interaction in our life, everything we do, every relationship. Romans 12 and 20. No more cursing in the house. Therefore, God, I thought it was enough not to fight back. I thought it was enough that if I'm cursed, not to curse back. But now you want me to do something? Physically? This is too much. That's how you know you're safe. If you can't do it, you say, I ain't doing this, you ain't safe. 
Right, if, if you say, uh-uh, forget this, no more church for me, you're not saved. But when you get saved, you understand, this will prick you, if you, even if you don't like it. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, guess what? I, I studied this in, in, in the Greek. If you look in the Greek, guess what it says? If your enemy is hungry, feed him. <laughs> you can't get out. It's the same thing. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty. Y'all know what y'all do. If your enemy is dirty, you just... Well, we're supposed to give him drink. For in so doing, you will heat coals of fire. On his head. No more cursing in the house. Now, I know some of you say, that's what I... Okay, I'll do it, God, because I like that coals of fire stuff. That's what I'm talking about. But we misinterpreted in the Greek. This is actually what it means. The heat live coals and introspective, when you look at the background of it, it's on a person's head means to make him ashamed of his hostility by surprising him with the unconventional kindness. That's what it, it, it's not putting pain on him or hurt, but what it is, when I bless you, when you curse me, it's gonna do something to you. Anybody can bless when you curse. Man, when somebody embraces you when you want to fight, it, it melts something on the inside. It, 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 it'll, make you, it'll make you feel the same. My wife has done that time to me. Sometimes to me, I woke up sometime, I'm like, I'm ready. We're going to get it on. We're going to argue today. This is an argument. I don't care if I'm past the Ebenezer Baptist Church. I'm not having a good day. We're going we to get this out. We're going to get this out. And then First Lady B, she'll look at me and say, I love you. <laughs> now, sometimes I'm on the other side. I'm just trying to make her look good right now. What she did was, I was an enemy. But instead of fighting back, Dudley style, she said, I love you. Now, now I gotta go back to the word. And sometimes she'll even use stuff, remember what the pastor said. I am the pastor! Romans 12, 21. Now I understand even more. It says, do not be overcome by evil. This is the key. No more cursing in the house. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That lets us know this, this Greek word, this overcoming, means that the enemy is after us. He's trying to walk us down. It's like he's like a lion. That's the picture of it. He's tracking us down. He's trying to overcome us. So what do we do when evil tries to overcome us and we're tempted to curse? All of a sudden, we've got to turn it around. We've got to turn it around. We've got to overcome evil with good. i got to realize I am saved. I am not going down this path anymore. I'm going to give God praise in spite of my situation. Yeah. J.N. Darby explains this. He says, if my bad temper puts you in a bad temper, you have been overcome of evil. If you have somebody in your life that can cause you to have a bad temper, just because they have a bad temper, You've been overcome. There ought to be some amens or some ouches or something in here. If somebody, if your manager can cause you to have a bad day, you've been overcome with evil. If that slow car in front of you, just because you were late and you chose to sleep late, you missed your alarm clock, can get you in the road rage. And I hear you, some of you, some of you were rushing to church. If you just go fast. George Washington Carver, you remember him? He once said this, he said, I will never let another man ruin my life by making me hate him. No more cursing the house. I, I, I'm coming to that point, never ever, I'm not gonna let any folks, I'm gonna do my best to try to keep people off my last nerve. I, I'm gonna put enough good on top of that last nerve, whatever I need to do, so when they try to jump on that last nerve, all they gonna do is just bounce off of it. Cause it's coming up, why? Cause I know I've been saved, Dealing with life and folks and relationship can be hard. But God says no more cursing in the house. 
Well, as we finish this chapter, our Father in heaven has set a high standard. All of us can understand that. We're like, oh, Lord, I'm challenged with this. And those who have progressed more, praise the Lord. But there's some of us that say, God, I need more of you. Uh, that's why Jesus had to come from heaven to earth to show us that it could be done. Christ came. He loved like none other. When Nicodemus came to him by night, you remember, he was a Pharisee. He was actually, the Pharisees were against Christ. And so Nicodemus snuck up in the midnight hour in the darkness and said, you know, I don't understand all of these things. I know I'm a learned man. I've got doctorate and post-doctorate, but what you're saying, you, you're blessing us when we're cursing you. It, it's messing up my mind. What do I need to do? Jesus said, you must be born again. <laughs> that, that, that's the only way. That's the only way. I, I know that you can think, you know what, maybe I can live like Gandhi, but believe me and tell you today that if Gandhi don't have Jesus, he's cursing sometimes. He's going through some stuff. But I thank God today for Christ on the inside and for the Holy Spirit. I'm so glad that Jesus didn't stop there. But he was betrayed with a kiss from his own church. Are you listening to me? Judas! But he did retaliate. How, how am I to do that? Jesus, you understood that that betrayal would happen. But you still gave him communion. You knew that he was going to betray you and pretend like he loved you. But you let it happen. I'm talking to somebody. Luke 22, 48, you don't believe me? But Jesus said to Judas, Judas, are you betraying the son of man with a kiss? The issue is today that sometimes your enemy may not come with you with knives or guns, but sometimes a kiss. Young ladies, are you listening to me? Young men, are you listening to me? Sometimes a kiss can be your demise. No more cursing in the house. But Luke 22, 49, when those around him saw what was going to happen, they said to him, Lord, sound like some church members, don't we? <laughs> Pastor, we got this. We got, we got your back. Lord, shall we strike with the sword? Then all of a sudden, one of them, man, one of the close ones with him, Peter, one of them struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. His right ear. No more cursing out. How can your guarded disciples who were close to the anointing carry the anointing, had the power, act like this? Have you been there? Oh, pastor, that was a good sermon. My heart was touched. And by the time you get to the cover, you don't curse somebody in the house. Phone calls take us over. A pain takes us to the other side. But Jesus, in Luke 22, 51, but Jesus answered and said, permit even this. And Jesus touched his enemy's ear and healed Jesus said to Peter concerning this, Matthew 26, 52, but Jesus said, put your sword in its place. Are you with me? Because this is the key. For all who take the sword will perish by the sword. But I love this. I'm going to pull it together for you. Matthew 26, 53. But Jesus said, you, you, you don't even understand. And, and I, I'm realizing this in my life. I got more that's with me than against me. I'm, I'm telling you, I know it feels like you're all by yourself. Some of you going to get this. You're going to just put it in your pocket. It's going to pop up later. They are more with you. Yeah, they're more on your side. Than against. It feels like everybody is against you. I want you to know they're more with you. Matthew 26, 53, Jesus said, Or do you think that I cannot now pray to my Father and he will provide me with more than 12 legions? What Jesus was saying, I don't need you to fight. 
Because I know the victory is there ought to be some hallelujah. I don't need you to fight this. I got this. I got this. Just because I've been betrayed with a kid, just because it seems like everything is going the wrong way, it's going the right way. Yes, yes, it's going the right way. I know I'm going to have to suffer. And I, I know they're going to beat me all night long. But I want you to know the scriptures have to be fulfilled. It's has to happen this way. All so that you can grow. Nails in his hand. Nails in his feet on the cross of Calvary. But I'm so glad he died. But he gets up on the third day with all power. I can tell my enemy now, I got resurrection power. I, I don't care what you do to me, I, I still live. He still lives on the inside of me. I don't care how bad it goes, I can still lift up my hands and say, God is worthy. Come on, come on to you. No more cursing in the house. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Father, examine us. Lord, we want to be more like you. In Jesus' name. As our ministers come forth, our deacons, our intercessors, I don't want you to miss this call. Salvation first. Salvation first. If you don't know Jesus, confess in your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God is raised from dead, you will be saved. Just come forth. And with this, this second invitation, real serious call. Some of you have attitude issues. You've been holding stuff, and you've been trying to grow past it. I'm not even asking you to come and necessarily grab somebody to pray. You can with that. I just want you to come to the altar. I want you to be tuned up today. We, we use that word a lot in our 8 o'clock service. Tune up to God's spirit. If you're here today, you're struggling with some stuff. Some stuff from the past. Some stuff on your job. Complaining, bad waking. Bring it. Bring it to the altar right now. No more cursing in the house. Bring it to the altar. Don't be ashamed. We're not asking you to confess exactly what it is. But you're struggling with some stuff. You feel like... That you've been used, abused, that they are not respecting you and who you are and what you've contributed in life. And you feel like, and feel like I need to retaliate. I want you to just bring it to the altar right now. Also, there's some of you that need to intercede for somebody else that's in your life. You, you're trying to do the best you can, but maybe your manager, your boss, there are other struggles that are in your life. And, and you, you just want God to move on their life. You want them to move. Maybe it's a brother or sister. They're still, you know, you let it go. But you know, they're still holding. They're still holding. Somebody spoke to me the other day and said, I still got stuff in my heart. I'm like, let it go. So if God has released you, remember, anything that's not blessing is cursing. So I encourage you right now, would you bring that loved one to the altar right now? Would you bring them? Would you bring them? There have been some broken relationships. Would you bring that to the altar right now? Say, God, that girl really hurt me. That man really, that boy really hurt me. And, and God, it, it's past, but I'm hurt. I need some healing. I need some closure. Would you come? Would you come? Some of you got church hurt. Yeah, church hurt. Church that you were worshiping at, or maybe Ebony's you got hurt within the church, and you're holding stuff. You're holding stuff. Bring it to the altar. Would you bring it to the altar? Salvation. These other issues that we have. Oh God, it's me. It's me. It's me. It's me, Lord. It's me, Lord. It's me. By releasing these things, I'm telling you, healing can come into your heart. Once it gets in your heart, it seeps over into your body. And now the ulcers begin to disappear. Stress related things, high blood pressure begins to go all because you chose to follow God's way. Bless and not curse. I hear you, Lord. One final invitation. Some of you are having a really hard time with the government right now. Man, whatever affiliation you're with. You're having a hard time with our president, the decisions that are in our country. You haven't been praying, you've been cursing. I want you to be honest with yourself today. And you know, you know politics, you get caught up in it, you become a feverish struggles. Would you bring that to the altar today? 
Hey God, I lay it down at your feet. I don't understand it all. But God, I don't want to be a vehicle of cursing anymore. That which I don't understand, I'll pray about it. Would you bring it to the altar? God is faithful. God is faithful. Oh, he's faithful. I want to give you some time. And God, any of those invitations touches your heart, pulls that you bring it. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Holy Spirit is here. He's moving. He's moving. You know if you got something you're holding, bring it, bring it, bring it. Wouldn't wait. Wouldn't wait if I was you. Wouldn't wait if I was you. Father God, it's in the name of Jesus that we, your servants, come to you, Lord God. First of all, Lord God, we come thanking you for this season right now where your servant began his passion. We understand what's happening on the end, but we know what the intention was to save us from a pit of hell. Lord God, we thank you for the word that has gone forth today. And I pray, dear God, and I'm coming in agreement with every soul in here that's praying that we will be able to remove cursing from our house. Lord God, we ask you to help us remove it from this house of prayer right now in the name of Jesus. For the very people that we worship and fellowship with, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, in our families, God. Our brothers and our sisters, our mothers, our aunts, our cousins. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bind right now the spirit of the devil that seeks to steal, kill, and destroy. Lord God, even on the hearts of the servants that we have to fight against this thing called retaliation. Father, we thank you that we have been reminded on today that all vengeance belongs to you. But we do not pray vengeance upon our enemy, God. We pray mercy, hallelujah, and grace. Because, Lord God, we need it. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for the people that you have brought back in here by the power of prayer. Lord God, help us to be ready. Help us to be ready when you come. Lord God, we just give you honor. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, we say amen. Amen. I feel a little lighter now. You got a challenge because you're going to just leave. Bless your heart. 
Husbands, you're going to love your wives more. Wives, you're going to love your husbands. Singles, you're going to live a holy life. Your supervisors, you're going to love those that you manage better. If you're one that works under a supervisor, you're going to love your manager. Why? Because I'm saved. We're saved. We've been delivered and set free. No more cursing in the house. Father, thank you for your presence. Thank you for who you are. Help us to not curse, but to bless. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you greet your neighbors before you leave?